I'm going to call this meeting of the uh, East Gloucester Veterans uh, Memorial School Building Committee uh, to order. Um, the uh, meeting is recorded by video and audio in accordance with state open meeting law, consistent with the governor's orders suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and banning certain gatherings such as an in-person meetings of the building committee is not possible. This meeting will be conducted by remote participation. The public may not physically attend this meeting, but every effort will be made to allow the public to view and listen to the meeting in real time and participate when uh, necessary. Okay, that being said, um, um, looking for Chris. Chris isn't here today. Chris isn't here so, today. Well, <laughs> and neither is Mark. No, so neither I, is Mark. I've got all the bases covered. All the bases covered. So at this point, what we would normally do is ask for a roll call for attendance. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Pope. I am here. Ben Lummis. Here. Richard Safier. Here. Sapphire. So, sorry, Sapphire. Um, Greg Katamatori. Here. Kathy Clancy. Here. Donna Compton. Here. John Dunn. John Dunn was here. He was here. Here. Yep, oh, there he there is. He is. Uh, Gary Frisch. Here. Matt Fusco. Not there. Grant Harris. Here. Joe Lucido. Jameson Manning. There. Amy Pascarello. Here. Adam Roselle. Here. And Kathleen Eunice. Here. Okay. That's it. Okay, so we have a, a quorum and uh, we will proceed. And the first order of business is the um, approval of um, the East Gloucester Veterans Memorial uh, Project uh, meeting minutes of May 13th. Um, 2021. Um, are there any corrections or omissions? Kathy. Um, Jonathan, I just want to point out that Ryan Marquise is still listed as kind of a non attendee. Um, and I believe you, the formal change of the building committee members was changed. So that should probably not be yeah. indicated anymore. Um, it was changed. I'm not sure it was changed um, before the beginning of that meeting. Okay. All right. So uh, I, it can, it, I, I don't know. We, we sent it in and, and we, it came back and we sent it in and that sort of thing, okay. mostly because I didn't send it in right or something. But uh, it's, it has been changed, but I think we'll make sure his name's removed. It, yeah, no, it is. It has been removed. And the mayor's office sent in a, an updated um, and, and put, you know, the other changes, which was to move Ben as a co chair. And uh, I think that was about it as far as the changes go. Okay, are there any other corrections or omissions on the uh, minutes? Seeing none, I will make a motion that we approve the uh, meeting minutes of um, uh, May 13th, 2021. Second. Okay. Uh, so we need a, a roll call vote. Jonathan Pope? Yes. Ben Lummis? Yes. Richard Safir? Yes. Ray Katamatori? Yes. Kathy Clancy? Yes. Donna Compton? Yes. John Dunn? Yes. Gary Frisch? Uh, abstain. Grant Harris? Yes. Amy Pascarello? Yes. Adam Roselle? Yes. Kathleen Eunice? Yes. Okay. Uh, it passes, um, and I'm trying to count them up right now. Uh, I think it's uh, 12 in favor and one of abstention. So thank you very much. We'll move on to invoices. And we have three, Brian, is that correct? Yep. And uh, we will take them, uh, let's take uh, Doran Whittier first. Seems there. 
So Dorn Whittier has an invoice for $15,412. That is their standard uh, monthly invoice for pre-construction services. That's, and this is for- That's, uh, Dorn, that's um, WT Rich. Yes, did I, did I say? Yeah, I, well, I said Doran Whittier and you said Doran. Oh, you said, but, oh, okay, the, sorry. The number was uh, W.T. Rich's number. So we can take yes. W.T. Rich first, if you'd like. Okay, yeah, so W.T. Rich. Um, yeah, and this is for the month of May for their services for 15,412. Uh, this is their invoice number six. They so, did note that it was for services provided from May 1st to May 32nd, just as, which is a bit of an anomaly. I want to point that out in case anybody cares. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got an extra day out of them, I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, I'll make a motion that we approve um, the WT Rich invoice uh, dated uh, June 7th, 2021. Um, and it is, we have a number on here. Um, it's number uh, 2020001 06. Okay. That sounds good. Uh, 2001 uh, For 15412 dollars And I so move. Second. Second. Is there any um, discussion? This is still in pre construction uh, services. Um, it's all budgeted and um worry i'll get you for that extra day next month yeah uh, <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> okay um seeing no more uh discussion could we have um a roll call vote jonathan pope yes ben lummis yes richard Safar. yes greg katamatori yes kathy clancy Yes. Donna Compton. Yes. John Dunn. Yes. Gary Frisch. Yes. Grant Harris. Yes. Amy Pascarello. Yes. Adam Roselle. Yes. Kathleen Eunice. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. It passes unanimously. Now we have an invoice uh, from, let's try Doran Whittier this time and see what we get. Okay. So Doran Whittier has an invoice here in the amount of, um, over here, $311,615.45. This invoice covers the remaining part of their design development fee um, in the amount of, 68,720. Then there's $160,188 for the construction documents fee, which they've currently been working on for some time. Actually, they've issued the 60% construction documents already. And then there is an amount for 3,400 for the early release package one, which has also been completed. And that would uh, fulfill that line item and 13,750 for their early package two, which uh, they have been working on and um, will be set out for review any day now. And then in addition to that, there's a geotechnical allowance for $53,256.50 um, for the site exploration work. Um, Printing allowance of $45.57. That was uh, for the special permit. Uh, some printing that had to be done for that. $2,261.88 for the wetlands consultant and $9,993.50 for permitting, which included uh, the notice of intent. So again, the total of $311,000 $615.45. That is their invoice number 25 uh, for the month of May. Okay. I move that we approve the Doran Whittier invoice as presented. Okay, somebody can say Second. Something. There we go. All right, is there any discussion or questions? 
Okay, seeing none, um, uh, we will um, call for a roll call vote. Okay, um, Jonathan Pope. Yes. Ben Lummis. Yes. Richard Saffer. Yes. Sorry, I keep on saying that wrong. Sapphire. Could you say it one more time for me? It's just like the stone, sapphire. Sapphire, okay. Like rock. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Greg Catamatori. Yes. Kathy Clancy. Yes. Donna Compton. Yes. John Dunn. Yes. Gary Frisch. Yes. Grant Harris. Yes. Amy Pascarello. Yes. Adam Roselle. Yes. Kathleen Eunice. Yes. Um, again, it carries. Thank you very much. It carries unanimously, and we'll move on to the CBRE Harry uh, invoice. Okay. Um, our invoice for this month is fifty-three thousand six hundred and thirty-nine dollars and eighty-six cents. Those are for the uh, the hours that were accrued uh, based under our contract for the CD phase for the month of May. Mm -hmm. And that invoice number is PJIN0024481. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the CBRE Harry um, invoice PJIN0024481 for the amount of uh, $53,639.86. Second. Okay. Um, could I ask, could sure. I ask Brian if, if you guys can make your invoice numbers any more complicated? <laughs> you can work on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, thank you. Um, I was going to say something in the same um, vein. Um, <laughs> is there any other, other discussion? Uh, seeing none, let's have a roll call vote, Brian. Okay. Jonathan Pope. Yes. Ben Lummis. Yes. Richard Sapphire. Yes. Greg Katamatori. Yes. Kathleen Cansey. Yes. Donna Compton? Yes. John Dunn? Yes. Gary Frisch? Yes. Grant Harris? Yes. Amy Pascarello? Yes. Adam Roselle? Yes. Kathleen Eunice? Yes. Thank you very much. Passes unanimously. And we'll move on to, um, is there any Thing else that needs to, um, John Dunn is on a, um, a, sh uh, a, a quick schedule tonight. And um, is there anything else we have to vote on? Um, um, it, it would be the, ch I believe the change audit process, uh, Brian. Is there um, anything yeah, I was, I was actually gonna suggest we could vote on that next week. Um, but the one thing that we do have under new business is um, Doran Whittier has uh, put together the information for the radon design. So the radon design was something that uh, was originally in the budget, or I'm sorry, the, the radon mitigation package was in the budget, um, but there was no funds that were allocated um, for the design and they're gonna need a designer to work through those details. It was a small amount of money and the city and district wanted to make sure that they did keep, on, keep that radon mitigation system. So I can um, show you what that is. I'll, I'll share my screen. Okay, good. Let's see here. Okay, can you see this now? Not yet. Oh, not yet. One more time. Now? Yep, yes. Yep. Okay. Okay, so, um, so this came from McPhail Associates and Doran Whittier will be working with them on this uh, radon mitigation system. Uh, Doran Whittier will also need to do some small revisions to the architectural work 
um, on the building. And the fee was for $24,200 uh, for both of those services. So we could uh, vote on this one before John leaves. Okay. So um, you said some of this, um, some of this money was in the budget and some of it wasn't, or is this all that wasn't in the budget? So, so uh, we do have line items for additional services. So th this actually would need to come out of the owner's contingency for the design fee. The money for the radon system is in the budget. Okay. It's in the construction budget. Okay, are there any other questions? Well, I, again, so, so this is, is owner's contingency, Brian? Yes, that's correct. Okay, all right, thank you. I can't see everybody, so if you have a question, just speak up. I can stop sharing. Okay. Was this in the packet? Um, this actually was not in the packet because we just got it. Okay. So, if we want, we could, you know, we could vote no, on it next. No, we 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 had this discussion. Um, Yes. Uh, and um, about uh, the importance of, of um, you know, we live on top of a big chunk of granite and that's where radon comes from. So um, let's, uh, it, it was uh, pretty much determined that this was prudent to um, proceed um, with radon mitigation. So um, um, jo <clears throat> Jonathan, is this technically new business? Technically, yes. All right, I just want to just want to make sure, and and I you know absolutely agree that we should bring it forward now, um, so that we go all, all raise our hands if we <laughs> decide to raise our hands. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, um, and I don't, I, I don't have the number in front of me. It was it was a total of twenty four thousand dollars, correct, uh, Brian? Twenty four twenty four thousand two hundred. Yes. Twenty four thousand two hundred. Although it's it's it it will be expended in. It'll, it's, this is just to approve the, the the encumbrance of that money, not the paying of it, right? Yes, that's okay. correct. All right, so I'll make a motion that we um, uh, authorize Doran Whittier to um, hire, what was the name of the company, Hill? Um, McPhail. McPhail um, uh, engineers um, to design a radon mitigation system um, not to exceed $24,200. Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none, roll call vote. Jonathan Pope? Yes. Ben Lummis? Yes. Richard Sapphire? Yes. Greg Katamatori? Yes. Kathleen Clancy? Yes. Donna Compton? Yes. John Dunn? Yes. Gary Frisch? Yes. Grant Harris? Yes. Amy Pascarello? Yes. Adam Roselle? Yes. Kathleen Eunice? Yes. Okay, once again, it carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, do we need to vote on the change order process this evening, uh, Brian? Is that um, no. Okay. All right. So um, there's nothing else we need to vote on because, as I said, uh, Mr. Dunn has um, other business to attend to and uh, may have to leave early. So I wanted to get all the votes out of the way first. So Great. that being said, let's just proceed with the OPM update. All right. Okay. Well, I, I will just say thank you very much for um, making sure that I was able here to take votes and I will see you next time. <laughs> okay. Thanks, John. Bye, John. Take care. Good luck. Okay, uh, I'm gonna share my screen here. So uh, this was included in the package. Um, so I'm gonna go through our schedule update. Can you see the schedule here? Is yes. my screen visible? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, great. So um, yeah, so first, what's happening on the design end? 
uh, the designers are working on the early release package number two. Uh, as I said, that should be forthcoming um, any day for the complete package, although the design work has already been done and is included in the 60% um, CD submission, which was uh, just issued last week. So right now, um, those design documents are being reviewed by our office as well as the commissioning consultant and the construction manager. Um, and as we go through those documents, we are looking carefully to see what possible cost saving measures there could be. Um, we'll be doing a cost estimate um, a little later in this month, I guess towards the end of June. And we have had some concern about rising costs. And so we're trying to get a step ahead of that and to see if there are um, different approaches that we can take to help reduce uh, the cost of the project in case the uh, estimates come in higher than, than budgeted. So uh, that's kind of on the design end, on the construction end, we have started preparing the RFQ. That is uh, for the subcontractors. That's gonna go out um, in our advertise under the central register. So we'll be putting that together. And under new business, we'll be looking for some volunteers for that, uh, for a subcommittee on that, but we can cover that a little later. And then the uh, construction manager is also, um, has started work on the EP1 activities. Uh, right now they are going through the submittal uh, process. Uh, the actual physical work will start in uh, August, August 1st. So that's pretty much um, what's going on with the main schedule. Does anyone have any questions about that? No? Okay. Hey, once again, so I also wanted, yep. I was just gonna say, once again, I can't see you. So just please, if you do have a question, uh, just speak up. Okay. okay. So I also wanted to share uh, what's happening at St. Anne's. So this schedule was also included in the package. So in St. Anne's, uh, there's a lot of activity that's been going on. We've been making some good progress, but um, we're kind of at a crunch time where we're finalizing uh, the last contracts, making sure we have all the parties on board. And we've started to see some schedules slipping, but we still are, are tracking um, to have everything done in time. But we're seeing a lot of contractors that are filling up their schedules and things are starting to get backlogged. So that's happened uh, recently with a number of different, uh, different contractors. One of them was with um, the technology work at the school, uh, that work involves putting all new cabling in for the IT infrastructure. And uh, we were looking at a three week delay with them, but we've been able to negotiate with them and uh, bring it kind of back on schedule. So um, there'll still be a little bit of a delay, but it's not gonna impact us too much. So yeah, as I mentioned, uh, finalizing the contracts, WT Rich is getting the permit together to start their part of the work. Um, the diocese has been working on all the building improvements uh, for their new tenant, and they're pretty much complete. They've had a little bit of delay also uh, with the Mason, kind of for the same reasons. Um, the DPW has started on the painting work, so we're excited to, to get that done. That's going to help make the space look a lot nicer. And uh, we're still also working with the diocese to see if they can pick up some additional painting work. Um, and then on the other end of things at the school, we've been making a, a lot of progress there as well. So we have Wakefield movers on board. Uh, we had a, a meeting with all of the school staff back, I guess it was mid-May, um, or I'm sorry, June 1st, June 1st was that meeting. And uh, the school staff is well underway. They've been sorting through things. Um, disposing of a lot of unnecessary paper items and they have boxes now as well. So they're starting to pack up their materials. And I guess that's all pretty much tracking, tracking quite well. 
Uh, the movers, as I said, Wakefield movers are on board and they're scheduled to begin the move now on July 12th. So that's kind of what's happening on that end of things. Does anyone have questions about the St. Anne's schedule? Nope, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, excuse me, Brian, I don't have questions about yes. St. Anne's, but I'd like to circle back to one of your earlier comments about your concern about rising costs. Could you just mm -hmm. sort of uh, describe whether it's uh, construction materials or schedule delays or where's the concern stemming from, please? Uh, the, the concern for the rising costs is for materials. Um, there is a spike in materials in a, in a number of different things, steel, aluminum. Uh, we've been receiving notices from different contractors and also internally uh, we have our, our organization kind of stays on top of those things internally as well so that we are on the forefront of what's what's happening and we don't really know you know what the future will hold we're seeing as I said some spikes in certain certain materials also um, the uh, lag time for getting things ordered is, is an issue that could uh, cause delays in the schedule, which would also then, you know, be attributable to additional costs. Um, so we have talked to uh, WT Rich about these things and about these concerns that we have. And WT Rich is working on coming up with some strategies on how we can um, mitigate those challenges. I've also heard that they might be short-lived. Um, but no one really knows, I guess, what the future holds. I mean, the backlog of things has to do, I think, with a lot of the shutdowns that happened during COVID. And now that uh, things are ramping up and there's lots of work that's taking place, there is a shortage of labor and a shortage of materials, and that's what's causing those spikes. Thanks. Yeah, I just know a year and a half ago, a, a common two by four, eight footer was maybe three, three dollars and 50 cents. And now you have to buy it for eight dollars. So on a grand scale, I can only imagine. So um, and, and Brian, if you can elaborate just on the, you know, there's we have contingencies and there's also value engineering. So there's, you know, there there are mechanisms built into the both the budgeting and the process to, you know, account for for these, because they're always expected, or you know, they're they're planned for, I should say. Uh, yes. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Ben. Uh, you know, when we set up a, a budget for a project like this, there are a lot of unknowns, and we we take those into consideration by putting in a number of different contingencies, both um, for the construction on the construction cost side of things, as well as for the owner and the designer and you know, all these different variables that we're trying to manage. But then the other part of that is um, dealing with the, the design of the project and going through value engineering exercises. So we did that already uh, back in schematic design before I was on the project. There were a number of value engineering items that came up. Some of those were implemented in the design and others uh, were not. So those other items that we've already uh, come up with could be used to offset any increased costs that might occur. Um, but in addition to that, we are looking more closely at these things now that we have the design further developed. Because as, each, as you go through each stage, more and more information gets put into the design. So there's you know, more decisions that can be made and um, ways, ways to save those costs. So is that clear? Yeah. Helpful. Yes. So Brian, um, also you mentioned delays. So does um, having this knowledge now kind of help when you're when people are ordering materials to kind of get on top of those orders so that that's not an additional cost because you're not you're, you don't want to be waiting for things. Exactly. So that's what we've asked WT Rich to put together, um, and they're working on that on that now. So what I just. You know, when we talk about value engineering, right? It's always time for the designer to chime in a little bit. <clears throat> One thing here, right? That it, it's it's going to be a pretty critical milestone that we've got coming up here with the sixty percent, because all of the 
the, the forces that we're seeing that are being driven by market. So we're not changing the building. We really haven't changed the building. Everything has been pretty much standard, you know, in terms of the design evolution of this, but it, it, it is expensive out there right now. And so we're going to have to look really hard, see where we end up. Um, you know, we're trying to anticipate those things, but we'll find out where we are at the 60% reconciliation. <clears throat> and then to the extent that we do need to look at um, you know, some type of VE, we're going to have to do that. And we're going to have to make those decisions, right, quickly, because we don't have a lot of time, right. And depending upon what those VE decisions may be, right, we're going to have to go back and that's going to require a certain amount of retooling of all of the design documents in order to implement those. So as the 60%, you know, ed estimate reconciliation comes up, um, you know, glass half full, right? Everything comes in and it's all good. Um, but if it doesn't, you know, the project team is going to come through, develop that list, and then we're going to be coming in front of this group. And we're going to have to, if we do have to make value engineering decisions, and they're never easy, I can tell you that right now, they're never easy. Um, but we're going to have to make those, some of those hard choices in order to get those changes into the design documents right, so that we don't have schedule delays, right? Because as y'all can understand, right, delaying in this type of market beyond all the other things that are associated with scheduled delays, which are all pretty much negative, <coughs> um, are problematic. So as, as Brian said, you know, we're, we're all focused on this right now. And, you know, when the 60% uh, estimate comes in, we'll see what happens, but Keep that in mind because we're gonna we're we're gonna be looking at that one very closely. Yeah. So so I mean, so far we're, we're still in good shape. You know, we haven't gotten there, but we are looking down the road and saying that is something that we might need to deal with, and uh, we want to make sure we're prepared to address it accordingly. So, and you said the um, the the uh, estimate reconciliation is some going to happen sometime in the beginning of July. Is that uh, no, in June. In June. Uh, I think it's June. Maybe, maybe June 24th or something. Okay. It's the 28th right now is what it's scheduled for. 28th, okay. Okay. So At this point, no reason to light, light my hair on fire and go running out the building and saying that we're over budget or, um, uh, or we're delayed. None of that. We're preparing. Oh. We're, uh, we're, we are, we have planned for this sort of contingency. So, right, no reason for anyone to light their hair on fire. No, nope. nope. Okay, great. Very good news. Yeah, right, and I would another just say, thing I guess I would I would add with the with the contingency is that you know we carry a contingency that automatically gets smaller as we get closer and closer to the end of design. So and you know, very early on in design, there are still so many different variables and costs that could come up that we need to have a large contingency. But as the design gets flushed out, we don't need to carry such a large contingency. So there's automatically money that can roll over uh, from that if needed to cover some additional costs. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Brian, I just wanted to thank you for that explanation on how a contingency should ideally operate. Um, you know, that you have a pot of money that's larger to begin with because you know there are variables that need to be accommodated along the way. And so if those variables don't happen or don't get used, you end up with a large contingency at the end, but I, but generally you actually end up closer to, to using a lot of it, right? That's, that's a typical project. Yeah, it's, it's intended for that. That's yeah. that, I mean, no one knows what the future is with anything. And, and when you're designing a project, you have some ideas of where things are going to go, but it, it just gets worked out, you know, throughout the process. So you have to allow for those. And, and that's why we, um, came close to a million dollars under on West Parish, it, it wasn't because um, things cost less, it's because we, they didn't cost more. Um, and, the, and the money that was left over was the contingencies that um, we didn't spend. Any other questions? Okay, I think the next thing was to go over the, the change order process. Okay. All right. So I'll, I have that image item on here so I can share that so we can all look at the same thing. 
Okay, so we discussed, um, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, yeah, so we discussed some of this um, last week already. And uh, what we've, I'm sorry, last, last meeting. And so what we've done is just basically, you know, put it out here in black and white so we can look at some of the different variables. Um, the change order process is really about, you know, keeping the job moving forward so that we can avoid project delays and any, you know, delay claims that would be associated with that. And then making sure that we have the right input from the construction manager, from the designer, and then also from the owner's team so that the, the proper decisions can be made on these things in an expedited way and avoid any delays. And of course, those decisions need to be made within the available funds. And also in light of all the things that are happening on the project. So sometimes you'll need to uh, you know, create an allowance for something more in one area because um, and there's another area that you can buckle down on and you know, save some money in that area. So these things have to, I guess, be balanced is what I'm trying to say. And the change orders themselves are really part of a, a whole larger process, which is the whole change process on a project. And that includes um, the RFIs. So those are the requests for information that will come from the contractor directed to the architect, um, clarifying different aspects of the contract. It would also include the architect's supplemental instructions or ASIs. So those are uh, pieces of information that the architect will produce that either indicates some small change to the contract documents or just adds additional level of clarification. Um, it includes proposal requests, which could come from the owner or um, usually from the owner, sometimes also from uh, the architect where there's an understanding that uh, this would be most likely an increased cost or maybe an increased time. And so they're looking for proposals um, from the, the contractor to get that work done. And then of course, uh, the change orders themselves, first as proposed change orders and becoming an official change order or a change directive where maybe there, there isn't an agreement necessarily on the cost, but everyone does agree that the work needs to be done. And so a direction is given to move forward with that, with the understanding that the costs will be worked out in the process. So um, in the past, we, you know, in the past meeting, we talked about, you know, the OPM um, having the authority to make uh, these decisions on the change orders. We talked about having a, a subcommittee, and then of course, the school building committee. And um, I guess what we're suggesting is to kind of break these things up into different cost parameters. So the idea essentially being that um, the daily things that are happening on the job and the smaller changes could be handled by the OPM team. So the OPM is gonna be on site every single day and having week, uh, meetings at least weekly. Um, so can you know, make decisions very quickly and knows the implications of those decisions. And on the OPM team, we do have three people. There's Dennis, Mark, and myself. So you know, that helps to balance things out. And then of course, those decisions are also um, made in collaboration with the architect and the construction manager. So handling um, change orders up to 50,000 for that group. And then for any change orders that would come up that would be over that amount, um, we could have a, a subcommittee. And what would I would suggest there is that we have uh, three people, ideally someone from the Department of Public Works, someone from the school system and someone from the city. And what I would envision is that for that subcommittee that there could be me meetings maybe uh, twice a month where we would go over all of these change processes that are underway. So the RFIs, ASIs, you know, change orders, all of those things, so that they would be, you know, not as in tune as, you know, the OPM who's there on a daily basis, but they would have a little more insight than the entire school building committee about what's going on. 
Um, it would be great if someone from that team could even come to some of the weekly meetings from time to time. I think that would be helpful because you know, if you're trying to make a decision on these change orders, you really need to know the background um, to what's happened because these things develop over time. Um, there are usually many factors that come into play. And in order to make a good decision, you, you need to be informed of those things. So it's helpful to be more involved. So for that subcommittee, um, maybe setting the amounts from 50 to 100,000, then if it's over 100,000, then that would go before the entire school building committee. So we would have, you know, from the owner side, there would be three people for under 50,000. Those would be the OPM representatives. And then for the subcommittee, we would then have six because we would have the OPM as well as um, the members of the subcommittee. And then if it's over 100,000, we would have, you know, however many people are available at that meeting. So I guess that's, that's kind of what, what we think would be a good fit for this project. And we can talk about that or I can answer questions about it. And then it would be good if we can have a vote on that by the next meeting so that we're set up to move forward with this uh, once construction begins. Could, Brian, could you just talk about the kinds of things that come up and that require change orders? Yeah, um, so a common thing that can happen is, uh, let's say during the excavation, they encounter unsuitable soils. So those are uh, poor soil that needs to be removed from the site and needs to be um, replaced with proper soil that uh, has the right structural qualities. So with something like that, we wouldn't wanna have to wait um, on a decision. It's something that clearly needs to be done. And, um, we, you know, we would want the activities on the site to keep on going. Um, another change that could happen is maybe there's a coordination issue um, where there was something that, um, you know, maybe wasn't well coordinated or was missing in, in the documents. I mean, those things happen. And so the contractor is saying, well, okay, that's, that's not what I had included in my cost. And, you know, we need to authorize that that subcontractor to increase the cost of their contract to get that work done. Um, and those are those are a couple examples, I guess. But it, it could be also an owner-directed change, you know, where uh, something is happening maybe later on in the building, and the decision is made that well, we, we didn't consider this this aspect before, but we would like to now incorporate that into this building and uh, we'd like to price that out. So maybe during, like during COVID, for example, on uh, one of the projects, uh, we looked at doing different uh, air purification systems um, that weren't initially part of the uh, construction project, but then the owner wanted to include those uh, additional features on the school. So that would be another type of change order. Yeah, the, the, my recollection at uh, West Parish is there were not a, a lot of change orders. Um, uh, some of them were because, you know, the, the equipment that was specified was not available and, and they wanted to substitute um, a comparable, but, but it wasn't what was specified. Or, um, and there was, no, I remember the one owner's um, uh, change, which was about the signage um, on the front of the building. Um, which, uh, uh, the, you know, when we got down to the, that part of it, um, uh, the, the committee wanted um, different signage than what had been planned, um, that sort yeah. of thing. And, and this, this is the primary reason that you have a, const a construction contingency built into the job. Right. right, so that that's where these changes are going to come from, right? That's what contingencies for. So you know, I forget exactly, but I think we have you know five or six percent, you know, that's built into the job now that we would go and you know, as change orders come through, that's where they would come out of. We'll be trying to anticipate most of these types of things when we go and sign up to the GMP. So there'll be you know allowances that will be be built into the GMP for some of these things, but again, this is what contingency is set up for. Right. Exactly. Brad, so, what does GNP stand for? 
guaranteed maximum price contracts. So that's the, that's the actual value that will be established, right? Once all the bids come in and, and WT Rich gets to a point that they're comfortable in <coughs> agreeing to that price based on where they are in their buyout. Thanks. Uh, I have um, a question. So um, are these thresholds that you have pre presented um, common? Is that on a project our size? Is that usually the way these projects handle the change orders? Um, they are common, but it's not on every project. Uh, on some projects, um, there is no subcommittee. The OPM uh, handles all of them. So, but it seems like for this project, the way things have been run, um, this seems to be kind of an appropriate, appropriate path. If memory serves, uh, this looks like a very similar configuration to what we did with the West Parish project with the same numbers, number ranges and the like. Mm -hmm. And um, aside from former school committee member, Tony Gross, concern about the signs and such, there were very, very few changes that went beyond the OPM level, if, uh, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I remember it not being a common thing to, to be discussing. Um, my second question is when you handle the under 50,000, um, there, is there reporting that happens at our next, um, do we get reported every month yes. on those? Yes, so all the, all the information would roll up. So at, at um, the school building committee meeting, you would be updated on, you know, the status of the RFIs, you know, how many are coming through, how many have been handled. I mean, you're not going to go into all the detail. But, you know, on a, on a summary level, yeah, yes, you would know all that information. Great. Okay. So we're not voting on this tonight, but um, so if, if, if anybody comes up with questions um, uh, about this so over the, before the next meeting, then um, just pass them on and we'll, we'll be prepared to uh, answer them. Um, like I say, the, the, in new construction, the, the change orders are, far, far, far fewer than in any kind of renovation or, or modification of an existing building. Um, yeah. Yeah, the more you can get a handle on all the information, the, you know, the less there's left open uh, for change orders. Yeah, so, but, 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 but they do, they do, they do happen, so. Um, okay, anything else? Any other questions before we move on? Seeing none, Brian. It's a designer update. Hello. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Yep. All right. So, since the last time we've met, we have resubmitted um, back to the MSBA. They had questions on our DD. Um, so, we've resubmitted, uh, we've submitted all of the MSBA DD response. And I believe those are also been posted already on the website. Um, we've got, we've received a letter from DESE saying that we're all set to go. They've approved our special education program and uh, with no changes or requirements to that. Uh, as Brian has noted, we are in the process of doing a 60% uh, um, construction document set. So we just recently have released that 60% out for cost estimating to PMNC, WT Rich and to CBRE. Uh, for cost estimates, and we'll be uh, reviewing and reconcili reconciliation at the end of the month. And our target date to release those 60% um, to the MSBA is uh, the first week of July, 7-7, I believe is our date. And there's also um, early release packages, and so we're currently working on what we're calling early release package 2, ERP 2, and that um, has also been released for review as part of the 60% um, cost estimating. And that package itself will, um, is being issued uh, later uh, the end of July. So um, we're just we're moving along on schedule right now. Um, just just trying to keep pace with uh, the, the schedule that we have. Um, I think that's that's it. We'll be um, showing some updates to the design uh, probably at our next meeting. Any questions? 
Okay, for those who don't know, the city council approved the um, special permit uh, for the height um, on um, last Tuesday. And um, uh, I, I believe um, we appear before the um, Conservation Commission next Wednesday, Michelle? Is that it is the 16th, yes. Oh, okay. So those are the upcoming. Um, and, um, and that is, is drawing the permitting um, uh, requirements um, um, closer to the finish line, correct? Yes, so that's establishing the notice of intent, and then we'll, um, and then we can begin to do the final permitting process. Great. Uh, any other? Yeah, so that was very, very good news with that we, you know, the special permit was approved. Um, I think the counselors did a nice job of reviewing the project and um, going over the impacts, um, mostly positive, but, you know, there's always a few negative things here and there but taking all that into consideration and reaching the conclusion that this was really a great project for the city. So it was nice to hear that. Okay. Um, so uh, any other questions for Michelle uh, before we move on? Um, so the CM update, um, Brian. Um, sure. Um, so, yep, as everybody else said, the 60% CDs have been issued. Estimating is uh, ongoing. We're also putting together some information on the current market uh, conditions to help us through reconciliation and coming up with that collective uh, you know, risk mitigation strategy uh, for costs and lead times, um, given the current volatile market conditions. Just one, one uh, important thing to, to point out there is uh, we are doing some really broad outreach for subcontractors to price it with the current market conditions. So we will have um, good input from, um, you know, subcontractors on what, you know, how they price this in, in these current market conditions. So we can really tell where we're at. Um, and, and with that, we'll get some really good feedback on how to, on how to manage, you know, any cost overruns or, or lead time issues. Um, so I, th I really think that's helpful. Um, you know, kind of on a case by case basis, you know, whether it's working with the steel, steel contractors or, um, you know, mill workers or whoever, uh, they come up with a lot of, you know, creative ways to get around these issues. So, um, you know, really getting them involved is, is going to be really helpful at this point. Um, so we'll report back and we're working with, with the team here to, to come up with a great strategy on how to move forward. Um, but also, so our design reviews underway, uh, CBRE um, set up a, a nice, collaborative blue beam session for us to review. Um, we have you know, several team members working on that and outside consultants. Um, we've also, uh, we're also providing comments on EP2, which is for the full site work, ground improvements, concrete, steel, uh, structural steel and glue lamb. Uh, again, that package goes out to bid on July 30th and then we'll, we'll uh, you know, have that bought out in September and presented here that you know, I think it's the second week of September um, and that works for the mobilization um, they mobilize in you know, the first week of October. Um, EP1, that work uh, is approved, procured. Um, contracts have been issued and we're currently in the submittal process. Permitting is ongoing. You know, all, our, all our utility work orders are in place. So we're ready for that, that mobilization on um, August 2nd. Um, we're keeping our pulse on everything and permitting and everything that's going on just to you know, properly plan and, and, and look ahead. Um, and you know, the only other thing I think is, is Sadans. um, we've got about a two, two to three, two to three week, uh, work schedule that we're targeting for the third week of June here. So, uh, that's right in line with, with Brian's schedule. So no issues there. And, uh, we're working with them. Uh, I think we have, you know, the weekly meetings going to join that at 930 tomorrow, just to, you know, make sure we're, we're up to speed with, with the scope that we're responsible for. And we're making sure we're ready for that, for that school year. Um, I think that's, that's about the highlights Any questions. Any, any questions? Okay. Well, thank you, Brian. I'm seeing none. Um, we'll move on to communications. Uh, Ben. Hey there folks. Um, Brian, can you give me sharing privileges? I just want to show folks. So, um, um, I don't know if I can do that. Okay. Oh, Maria. Maria, you're here. Can you give us give me sharing privileges? Yes, I can. 
Um, so just to give folks a quick update on, um, just to show you, to point out that, uh, so we're keeping our crack communication team is keeping the website nice and updated. So we have the updates from last uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, Tuesdays, <laughs> sorry, Tuesdays, uh, city council meeting and last week's PD subcommittee meeting um, with uh, the presentations and solar studies linked right from the homepage there. Um, and then also even the meeting minutes from uh, that were approved tonight are up there too as well. So, um, so that's all happening. Um, so on the, on the homepage are the more recent ones. And then uh, on the meetings and updates, uh, all the ones this year. And then in key documents, um, as you've pointed out a lot of times, the solar studies are up there, but also uh, in the design, the design development uh, folder right here are all the drawings that uh, anyone could ask for uh, in terms of what's been de uh, designed and uh, submitted to MSBA. Um, so that's all uh, good news to keep that up to date for folks. Um, anything else to add, Kathy? Some sharing here. Uh, no, I'm realizing we need to add the outcome of the special permit. Um, so that's the only thing that's missing from the updates on the on the website. No, I think I did that. I mean, no. six nine. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think it says. Okay. Anyway, we'll take. I'll take a look to make sure it. Yeah. Make sure that's accurate. Okay. Okay. Great. The other thing that should be noted is that um, uh, uh, there's been a number of requests for actual hard copies of uh, the plans, and um, Doran Whitty have provided um, two sets of, um, uh, of the full set of plans, uh, 217 um, sheets, and they are available for people to look at at the uh, city clerk's office. I think there's only one request. Well, it was only one, but it was persistent. Right. Um, can I recommend also that if it's not planned already that the um, veterans in East Gloucester communities get, or even actually the whole school, get uh, an update on where we are with the project before the end of the school year so that our families kind of can share in our excitement that the project's moving along quite nicely. Amy, have, have you, I know some, sometimes you and, and Matt are giving updates unbeknownst to me, which I appreciate. Um, seriously, I mean, I seriously appreciate that. Um, so have you, have you given, or do, you, um, do you know if you are, or have given an update to your school communities about where things are? We've given updates throughout the year. Um, I have not given one in the spring. We haven't had a lot of opportunities with parents coming in, so it's a good time to do that. I think the last one would be the neighborhood meeting in, uh, for veterans. That would be the... Okay, all right. Yeah, if you could get an email up, update and I'll follow up with Matt on it, that'd be great. Thank Absolutely. you. It's a good idea, Kathy, thank you. Uh, and is there any way of uh, knowing how many people are visiting the website? Grant Harris, did we turn analytics on for, for, for this subsite here? I believe we did. I can, uh, we can stop pulling those analytics uh, tomorrow. Super. Okay. And um, I should just mention for those who don't know that the, um, the, the time capsule was removed uh, from veterans, um, was that Tuesday, Tuesday morning? And um, it contained a number of artifacts. Um, apparently they opened it in 2008, I'm not sure why, and added to it. Um, but um, one, of the, um, one of the things I found most interesting um, was that um, they had the roster of the uh, original um, uh, school and um, it held 300, there were 338 students in that building when it opened. Yeah. We knew a lot less about brain science and learning and special needs and, uh, and uh, we're able to jam many more kids in a smaller space than we do, do, do today. But uh, that's all because there's been a there's been a lot of change in the world since 1958, and that's one of them. <laughs> well, and it's not just with schools. I mean, if you look at people's homes, uh, the sizes that uh, of homes, you know, you go back in times so like the 50s, the homes that were being constructed for families where maybe there were two bedrooms and the family had four kids. That wasn't 
that wasn't that unusual. So it's, it's not just with schools, it's across the board. Yeah, very true, very true. I, one of the things I, so they opened up a ninth, they opened up the time capsule in 2008 because that was 50 years from when the schools opened. The schools opened, actually opened in January, 1958. I learned this from the newspaper that was in the time capsule, okay? And um, so they opened it up at 50 years and, um, and then um, added some things in from that time and then kept the original time capsule there as well. One of the things I, th I saw from 1958 was the lunch schedule. I mean, the, 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 the lunch menu, which uh, was just curious to see, you know? I mean, there was, there was uh, Frankfurt's, for example, was one of, one of the things I remember, but um, some of it looked, um, you know, some pretty standard stuff, tuna fish and that sort of thing. So anyway, it was neat to see. And the kids were, kids couldn't believe that they were seeing paper that that was that old. That was very surprising to them. And and neither neither Matt nor I got hurt lifting out the uh, the granite block. Although it was close. It was close. <laughs> okay. Um, is there any uh, other new business that we need to take up? Uh, yes, I have one item. Okay. So um, as I mentioned earlier, we we're putting together the request for qualifications for the subcontractors uh, to begin on the early early work for the job, or actually for the later work as well. Um, and we'll have to be reviewing those qualifications uh, once they come back, and we need to set up a subcommittee with uh, two members for that. So um, it's usually good to have someone from purchasing uh, to review those. And then another member as well, maybe someone with uh, building background, it doesn't have to be, I guess it could be open to anything, but um, we would need two members to be on that subcommittee. Um, and basically what would happen on that committee is that uh, we would get the responses back um, with the proposals, you know, with, with the qualifications, I'm sorry, from all these subcontractors. And then we would go through those. We have uh, kind of a vetting sheet where, um, points are assigned based on different criteria that the uh, contractor meets or doesn't meet. So those would be divided up among the staff. Um, the designer, the construction manager, and the OPM would take kind of the bulk of those, but some of those would also be done by the owners. So it would be basically going through the qualifications of that contractor, uh, scoring them accordingly, and then we would all get together to review them and finalize the scoring um, to determine which uh, subcontractors are the preferred ones. Okay, do you need that? When do you need that by, Brian? Uh, well, we're getting the RFQ five, out. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would be great if we could have two volunteers at this meeting. Okay. Well, um, because of the qualification stated, um, um, I, I guess there's. I, hey, don't. I, I'm so <laughs> I was going to say. All right, say, Donna. <laughs> there aren't a whole lot of people that um, that would uh, qualify. Um, uh, as far as construction background, um, I, I don't. Uh, Adam is, uh, is in that qualification. Um, uh, yep. Yeah, I've got some qualifications there. Yeah, would you be interested in reviewing um, uh, the qualifications of subcontractors? Sure, that'd be fine. All right, there you have Excellent. it. Excellent. Lots of support. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. Okay. Um, uh, any other new business? I just want to, I was talking a little bit about this before we started the meeting. The school committee is going to go back to in-person meetings on uh, at our next uh, meeting. Um, the only people that'll be in the room would be this actual school committee and, the, and, and any of the presenters. Um, it, and we have a system set up so that it could be broadcast to the public, um, but um, it, it's a little different. Uh, we, don't, we don't get public input at our meetings. So it, it's just the, uh, having the ability to um, um, Zoom, uh, have a Zoom uh, link uh, of our meeting, um, but um, it's my hope that we can get back to in-person meetings as soon as possible now that it's, 
it's legal and um, uh, we uh, can do that. So um, I want everybody to think about that. And um, the school committee is going to be meeting um, using the uh, library at the high school, which is air conditioned. Um, and um, uh, I know that perhaps it's uh, 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 more work. We're very used to uh, just sitting in our office and turning on the computer as opposed to getting in the car and, and driving somewhere and you know climbing a couple flights of stairs, et cetera. But um, I think there's some value in, in actually um, looking at each other uh, face to face um, as we have these discussions. Um, I'm not gonna propose that we, we, we do anything, but I, I want everybody to think about how we, how, um, we might manage that. So thank you. And Jonathan, quick question, all, that all sounds so prehistoric, but the question I have is, um, how will you accommodate oral communications? Well, at the high school, um, we have set up, um, and we've done this with, um, with a combination of Zoom and in-person. And we've conducted negotiations um, with the uh, GTA where um, the negotiating team is sitting in the, in the library we have a TV screen in front of us, um, which is linked to Zoom. And um, we, see, um, we see the screen, just like you're looking at the screen now, of the, um, the other, um, all the participants on the other side. What they see is one thing, this, you know, the size of one of these with all of us in it, uh, sort of. So their, their view of us is, is um, not great um, because of the camera. Um, capacity that um, you know a computer does has for a large room it's great when you're sitting three feet away from it but it's it's not that great when you're looking at a room so but uh, as far as communication goes it works fine but I would just like to say that ultimately um, you know we don't take oral communications at these meetings um, so we don't actually have to interact with with the public um, we do have to make it available for them to see and, and et cetera. But, um, but so if somebody couldn't make it for some reason, they could zoom in um, and, uh, you know, and, and participate. Um, if, you know, so that's a, that's a, a capacity that we have. Grant could- Yeah, it uh, seems like that's a nice feature to have both. Like for example, today, you know, John Dunn, um, you know, has a busy schedule and he was able to pop in uh, from his location and, you know, be involved with certain parts and then, and then leave, you know, so sometimes it can include more people that way than if it's, if you only have to be there in person. And um, so that's, I'm, I'm just saying that's, that's the direction that the school committee is heading in. Um, although we only have one more meeting um, in June, and then we are taking all of July off, so we won't really put it put it to a real test until August, at which time we'll. So we're we're kind of pioneering the, and 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 uh, doing the test with the school committee to see what the, the pitfalls are, but um, but there are advantages I I believe in in sitting and looking at each other face to face. And Brad, the, the rum line opened last night, so um, there's that too. That was a good feature. <laughs> okay. Um, speaking of taking time off, I just wanted to remind everyone that um, our next meeting will be on June 30th, a little earlier than the typical July meeting. Because we, uh, we had made, yeah, we had made that change, uh, I think, at our previous school building committee meeting. Um, and that was to accommodate both the 4th of July when a lot of people are gone, as well as our MSBA submission. Right. Okay. Anything else? So oh. just, just to be clear, so that's a voting night. So it'd be great if in advance we would know that everybody, or that we would have a quorum in advance of that meeting. Well, we've had good turnout. Um, I mean. Yes because so, we get to do it on the computer. Yeah, right. Well, I'm not talking about changing it for the next meeting. Okay. I'm just uh, asking people to think about what, what, the, what, the, um, what they think about doing it is. We, we, the, the governor has extended um, the ability to um, have public meetings in, by Zoom 
uh, I think, throughout the whole next year. So it's not that we have to, it's just that we could. Okay, anything else before we adjourn? Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. 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 Okay. Ryan, uh, we could have a roll call vote. Who? Uh, Jonathan Pope. Yes. Ben Lummis. Yes. Richard Sapphire. Yes. Greg Katamatori. Yes. Kathy Clancy. Yes. Donna Compton. Yes. Uh, John Dunn Luft. Gary Frisch. Yes. Grant Harris. Yes. Amy Pascarello. Yes. Adam Roselle. Yes. Kathleen Eunice. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned. Um, we'll see you all in a couple of weeks. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, everyone. You.